All right, so now we're going to expand upon the oxidation numbers that we uh, learned in the last lesson uh, twice. Once uh, dealing with balancing the redox reactions that are acidic and balancing redox reactions that are basic. Now, there's a certain process that we're going to be using, and I've enumerated these, this process here in this list. And it's divided into two parts. The first part is what we call the oxidation number basis, and the second part is what we call the charge basis. So the first, and there's eight parts. So the first half deals with the oxidation numbers, second half deals with the charges. If you follow the step-by-step -step, um, process, you will find um, that this is fairly easy to figure out. There are a couple pitfalls, though, I'm going to warn you about now, and I'll warn you about a lot more later on. Pitfall number one is number three, balance the affected atoms only, and we'll talk about when we get there, but kind of put a big star by that. Uh, if you've got this copy down, uh, put a star by that. Uh, if you are printing out anything, put a star by that. You need to emphasize it right in your notebook. Number three, balance the affected atoms only. Um, and the second part deals with um, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, uh, depending upon if it's acidic or basic. Put a star by that, kind of a half star, because it's not nearly as big a pitfall as number three. People screw up this thing, it's because of step three more than anything else. Okay? So, having said that, we're going to come back to this back and forth when we do the rules of balancing, or, or do the balancing of an acidic basic solution. All right, so on page 886, we did this already with the, uh, with the oxidation numbers. If you don't remember, go back and check it out. But this is positive six, this is negative two, this is positive three, this is negative two, this is positive three, positive four, and negative two. If you don't remember how we got those numbers, check the previous lesson. So, what we've done at this point is that we have effectively done number one of the set of rules here. Determine the oxidation numbers of every element. Okay? Next one says identify the two half reactions. So in order to figure this out, we have to understand that redox means oxidation reduction reactions. So this is, yes, this is one reaction, but there's what we call two half reactions. The oxidation half reaction and the reduction half reaction. And you see the word redox is from reduction oxidation, but we generally deal with the oxidation first and the reduction second for reasons you'll see in just a little bit. So we put ox in red as an abbreviation for each one. And we, we take a look at what we call the affected atoms. What atoms are changing oxidation number when you go from one side of the equation to the other? And there's two of them that are doing that. Chromium is going from positive six to positive three, and carbon is going from positive three the positive four. The oxidation reaction, well first of all, let's do reduction, because that makes the most sense. Reduction reaction means the oxidation number is being reduced. And as you can see, the, the chromium is being reduced from positive six to positive three. Now, so we identified chromium going through the, through the uh, reduction process, but we can't separate the chromium out of that complex. We've got to bring the whole thing down. So we take Cr2O7, two negative. That entire complex with the chromium-6 in it stays together. And then on the right-hand side, the chromium here is by itself, so that's fine. So we Cr3 positive right there. And we know it's going from positive 6 to positive 3. That's reducing. So the oxidation reaction is exactly the opposite. So it's going to be the one that's increasing, and that, of course, is the carbon. So it's going from carbon, 
which is positive 3. But again, the carbon is in this complex called the oxalate ion. So we can't separate it out of there. And then the carbon over here is in the gas carbon dioxide. So it's increasing from positive 3 to positive 4. That's an increase in oxidation number. And I will explain the significance of that in just a little bit. But that's step two. And here comes the dreaded step three. It says balance the affected atoms only. When I say affected atoms, those are the atoms that are creating the oxidation and reduction reactions. The oxidation number is increasing for the oxidation reaction and decreasing for the reduction reactions. Okay? So in this case, the, ox the affected atom is the carbon. It's going from three to four. And it says balance only that. We don't care about the oxygens. They're there, but we're going to deal with that later. Right now, we're just focusing on this. We have two carbons here. We have one carbon here. So I'm going to put a two right there. OK? I have two chromiums here, one chromium here. I'm going to put a two right there, so now I have two chromiums on both sides. Now, the reason why people screw that up is because that rarely happens. It rarely happens. It happens like maybe one out of three or four times. And people get to the point, well, I'll skip three. It never shows up. Anyway, we'll move on to four. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, danger, danger. That's not good. Don't do that. Don't skip number three. Go through your list and make sure you check off each one as you go through. Either mentally or physically. Check it off. The last one involved in the oxidation numbers is determine the change in electrons by putting that change on the side of the larger oxidation number. This is also one that gets through. I should have mentioned this as, should have a star by it as well. This is a big one. But it's because number three isn't done correctly, number four gets really bad. But even when people do number three correctly, they screw up number four. So let's take a look at what happens here. The number of electrons that are being given off by uh, an element or an atom is the change in oxidation number. Now we take a look at carbon here, going from positive 3 to positive 4. That is a change of 1 in the oxidation number. But that's one electron per carbon. We have two carbons here. So instead of one electron, it becomes two electrons. Okay? Reduction reaction. You're going from six to three. Now, oh, again, electrons go on the side of the larger oxidation number. So we went from three to four. The larger oxidation number is four. So we put our electrons on the side of the larger oxidation number. Same thing here, six and three. So we put the six on the side where the large, I mean, we put the electrons on the side where the six is, all right? And that's a change of three electrons per atom. But because we've got two atoms in each one, we double that to six electrons. <coughs> okay? Now. That's the last time we deal with oxidation numbers in this process. Now we deal with the charge of the various components here. Now charge and oxidation numbers are not the same thing. Sometimes they will be, but technically they are not the same thing. So we're going to balance the charge of each half reaction by using hydrogen for the acidic reactions and hydroxide for the basic reactions. So we're looking at the total charge of each half reaction, and the hydrogens is what we're going to use for this particular set of equations. It has a positive one charge for each hydrogen. So we take a look at the charge that we have on both sides. Okay? So we take a look here. We've got negative two here. I just love this board. Did I ever tell you how much I really enjoy this board? We got a negative two charge here, and we got two times negative one here, which is negative two. So the charges are identical on each side. We don't have to do anything. Over here, we have negative six plus 
negative 2, which is negative 8. And over here, we have 2 times positive 3, Did I tell you how much I enjoy this board? I have a negative 8 total charge on the left hand side. I have a positive 6 on the right hand side. What's the difference in charges? And this, this gets a little tricky here. Imagine you're outside in the winter. And while you're outside, it starts out at 6 above 0 but then the temperature drops to 8 below 0. Is that a difference of 2 degrees? Oh, I think not. My skin says no, no, no. It's a chart. It's a change of 14. So this is 14 hydrogens that we are going to need to balance this charge out. How do we balance it? Well, if I add 14 hydrogens, each hydrogen has a positive 1 charge. If I put this on the side with the chromium units, that gives me a total charge of positive 20 with the negative 8. They don't balance out. So I have to put it on the side of the negative side, the negative 8. And like I said, that is a change of 14. So I'll put 14 hydrogens there. So if I add 14 hydrogens here, That gives me positive 6. So now the two sides have the same charge. That's my goal there. Okay? Now, the next one says balance the remaining atoms by using water or whatever is remaining. Most of the time you're just going to use water, but every once in a while you get a nasty little thing there that kind of clogs things up. But right now, it's going to be all about the water. Why? Well, What's the only thing we haven't accounted for yet? We've got hydrogens, we got carbons, we got chromiums, we got oxygens. The hydrogens are not balanced and the oxygen are not balanced. We're going to use water. Now, we come up here, we got two carbons on both sides, four oxygens on both sides, and the charge is balanced. The oxidation reaction is just fine. We don't have to do anything with it. But here, we have um, seven oxygens, no oxygens here. We have 14 hydrogens, no hydrogens here. So to get the two sides balanced, I'm going to need 14 hydrogens and 7 oxygens in the form of water. That becomes plus 7H2O. And that will give you 14 hydrogens, 7 oxygens, and 2 chromiums. In that reaction, everything is balanced. We have a positive 6 charge on both sides. Everything is balanced. Life is good up to this point. So what else we got left to do? Next thing it says is to equalize the electrons in each half reaction. So let's take a look and see what that means. 